श्रीला गुरुदेव की जाए श्रीमन महाप्रभु की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए श्री गिरिराज महाराज की जाए श्री जगन्नाथ बल सुभाग की जाए गोर भक्त वृंद की जाए गोर ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम यू नो थैंक्स फॉर कमिंग एंड दिस सो वी आर शेयरिंग सम क्यूएनए इन द मॉर्निंग सम क्वेश्चंस एंड व्हाटएवर टॉपिक्स यू मे लाइक टू प्रेजेंट टू अस एंड दैट विल बी द डायनामिक्स फॉर नेक्स्ट वीक बिकॉज इन द आफ्टरनून वी विल हैव a more specific series although today morning monday i realized we are speaking about grammar gita to continue with our monday series that i'm giving for the last months but that will be also in connection with mahaprabhu in puri we will link it too but for the time being in the morning we are receiving questions so i don't know if you have any questions who <laughs> though seems to have one question And how will us sorry also for the ones connected online here invite to for send any question if you want yeah i will ask a different question than the one we last eventually that one i i know will remember this one i can forget all right <laughs> in different scriptures you know there are different uh, uh, like uh, how we say uh, different the like attributes uh, for uh, to describe kanista dikari madhyama dikari tamadikari so sometimes they talk about the faith or how they relate you know, to to what the devotees um, different scriptures different things so my question will be if somebody you know can in some areas you know be more madhyama but in some areas more kanista like it, it doesn't have to go all together like all the qualities together Mm-hmm. like somebody you know might have a stronger faith but still you know the you know they lack some other qualities you know for example for example um, this is uh, what you know from a sastra or for example uh, how you know they they behave towards other devotees because sometimes we are seeing you know some Yes, you, you could ask, you know, then what kind of faith he has, you know, like if he, <laughs> you know, does not uh, yeah. behave yes. according. You are the, starting to, re- <laughs> to reply to your own question. <laughs> 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 yeah, basically, you already replied to your question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> But that's good. Sometimes you you realize, that, okay, I already had the answer here. So, <laughs> so I would say that it's not that possible because the point is that one thing takes to the other, one thing implies the other. I mean, you cannot have like I don't know, the faith of the Madhyam, um, or and 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 and, and the shastric knowledge of the Kanista and the whatever, and you relate with others as a as an Uttam or something because it's, it's dysfunctional. One thing will. be inter, inter, interconnected with the other for example we in our tradition the faith we want to attain we spoke about shraddha the other day a little bit but we didn't enter into all the details of that it's impossible to do so but for us the ideal faith type of faith to be culture is called shastriya shraddha and so that's a faith that is informed by by revelation it's not just mere faith if you will that there's a type of shraddha which is not shastriya we spoke about that also lokiki shraddha or komal shraddha which is more connected to the kanishta the other day this this idea came no like the kanishta will will see shastra through through his emotions and the madhyam will see his her emotions through shastra so it's another level of perception of reality so my point is if you are a madhyam let's say or are a kanista let's be more realistic for the situation of most practitioners they are not still maybe madhyam adhikaris but they should be pointing in that direction at least they should be informed by their guardians who hopefully are at least madhyam like 
that's the next goal to attain. They should have like a clear set of short-term goals, middle-term goals, long-term goals, basically. So middle, short-term goals, maybe if you are a Kanishta, okay, you have still certain things to attain as a Kanishta. Those are your short-term goals. But middle-term goals is you have to attain the platform, Madhya Bhakti. And long-term goal, you have to become an Uttam Bhakta, Bhagavata. I mean, that's for all. No? But again, that, that's long-term. Long-term goal, I mean, even in this lifetime, that may not be the case. <laughs> long-term goal doesn't mean, okay, in 10 years. <laughs> as we spoke the other day two or three lifetimes <laughs> so the point is if you have the faith of if you are a kanishta it means your faith is not yet too informed by scripture it's more there is some some scripture of course on some level but not that much so so the point is that and, and that takes you to not relate properly with others as well. That is one of the attributes of the Kanishta. He's not able or she's not able to, to discriminate and to appreciate all the diversity. And as we spoke yesterday, the associates of Bhagavan and the devotees and the importance of, of Bhakti, basically, because devotees are the personification of Bhakti and Bhagavan is Bhakta Bhakti Mam. It is described in the Bhagavad, and that's one of my favorite, or maybe the favorite definition of who is Bhagavan according to the Srimad Bhagavat and say Bhagavan Bhakta Bhakti Mam. He's the Bhakta of his Bhaktas. That's Bhagavan for the Bhagavata. He's the devotee of the devotees. One second. Mute all. <laughs> so, so the point is again you cannot have like or, or you cannot be again a Madhyam let's say and you have like the the faith of the Madhya, but the knowledge of the Kanishta, because again, the faith of the Madhya is Shastriya Shraddha. So in order to have Shastriya Shraddha, Shastra has to be there. You have to know Shastra. Um, and again, Shastra doesn't mean, no, to know Shastra doesn't mean you have to be an intellectual genius because not everyone is basically. You can be a Shastra genius as an Uttam. Actually, that's the, one of the attributes of an Uttam of the highest type of devotee, you are Shastra Nippon, which means a scriptural genius. But that doesn't mean you are an intellectual genius. I mean, you can be a Shastra genius without being an intellectual genius because Shastra has nothing to do with intellect. I mean, it has to do with applying your intellect as much as you can, but it doesn't have to mean to have like an IQ of, of this number of extent. I mean, do you follow my point? Yes. So, for example, Gorky Shordar Babaji was a Newton Bhagavad. And he was a Shastra Nipun, being a Newton Bhagavad. But he didn't know how to write nor to read. <laughs> One may say, like, how do you, that, that, that's not the idea. That, that, that has nothing to do with that. Intellectual genius, Shastric genius means you, you grasp the essence of, of Shastra, like this very example of Mahaprabhu when he was traveling and he found this person who didn't know how to read, how to write, and he had the Bhagavad Gita. And he was just looking at the cover, cover is it? Yeah. Of the Bhagavad Gita and he was crying. And everyone was like, like doing bullying to him because he doesn't know how to read, how to write. He's taking the book. I mean, what I, and he's crying mostly. He may be crying because everyone is, is laughing at him. <laughs> Mahaprabhu realized, no, he's not crying because of that. <laughs> so he got closer to him and say, why are you crying? Why are you crying? And he say, well, because I, I, I see the image of Krishna and Arjuna here on the cover of the Gita, and, and Krishna is Bhagavan, but Bhagavan is acting as Bhakta Bhakti Mam. He's the devotee of his devotee. He's been the, the Uber of Arjuna, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to put it in contemporary terms. <laughs> Chariot driver, Uber nowadays, uh, so, of Arjuna. So, I mean, he's God but he's the devotee of his devotee by the strength of love. I mean, that's so, so moving. I mean, I cannot contain my tears by realizing So Mahaprabhu started to cry along with him and embrace him and say, you really understood Bhagavad Gita. You really understood Bhagavad Gita. You don't need even to open the book. I mean, just the cover is enough to get to the gist of it. You don't need to memorize any verse. You don't need to go to verse number one. You just open see the cover and get stuck there 
as we spoke the other day, no? I was speaking in, in Raleigh in the United States, North Carolina with Mahamantra Dasi, one of my god sisters. And another, she was, she's studying Ramananda Sambhad in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that section, very confident. That's the Bhagavad Gita of Gorlila, since we are speaking of Bhagavad Gita. And I asked him, because she was studying Chaitanya Charitamrita last visit, and I asked him, how is your study? Of course, for sure, you must be studying yet Chaitanya Chaitamita because it's not a book that you will finish in hopefully in one month or something or in a year or something. She said, Yeah, I'm still, I'm, I'm now in Chapter 8, Madhi Lila, Ramananda Sambad. I got stuck there. <laughs> so I said, Great. <laughs> That's the goal of our life to get stuck there. I mean, we are not to finish the book and now what, what's more? Like, yes, I, 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 I'm reading a such a, oh. I cannot escape from this. I got trapped in, in between these pages for eternity. Mm -hmm. Or in the words of, of my Guru Maharaj, there is one blank page in each one of these literatures waiting for you to fill it with your own bhakti testimony. And you get stuck, you become part of the of, of the book for it forever. No? So this is the same idea. This devotee was just looking at the cover of the Gita and trapped, embraced there by, by all that he implied. In our case, we need to open and to read it up and down, left and right, and memorize, and still we may not be crying. Like just read <laughs> So my point again, this idea, no, I mean, regarding being a greatest devotee, doesn't mean that you need you are an intellectual genius, and you may be an intellectual genius and not be a devotee. I mean, to have a big intellect can be a big burden. I mean, I'm not against using your intellect. You have whatever you have, intellect. 3% of intellect, 100% of intellect. And we have to, of course, to engage whatever faculty we have in that connection. But as, as it is mentioned, as to just try, how is it? Jiva Goswami said, just try, Chinitya, Gunatam, whatever. In one comment, in his Sarva Sambad, in the commentary of the Sandarva, he says, the, the transcendental plane is a Chintya. So a Chintya means, what does it mean? In which sense inconceivable? In every single sense of the term? By the English. So conceivable by? By, 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 by grace. Yeah, by Shastra, no? by revelation and having faith in that revelation. So, so, so Jiva Goswami makes that point, no? that, that something is a chintya doesn't mean that it's inconceivable in every sense of the term, but it's only inconceivable if you approach that with your intellect. No? Tarka, he uses the word Tarka there. Tarka, the scriptures say Tarka Pratishtana. Tarka Apratishtana. Means if you just go with your intellect, that's your main tool for like, embracing the infinite, you will be rejected. You will have you will be apratishtana. Pratishta means what? Position. So apratishtana means no position whatsoever. You will be in a limbo. Basically, if you approach the absolute with your intellect, Apratishtana, you will be thrown in the limb, you will be nowhere because it's no no way of entering there. Only by your intellect. That's the point. It's not that now be a, 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 like a dumb person, like, oh, no, no, no intellect, just no, sentimental, sometimes that can happen. No, no, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. Yeah, it's all about the heart. <laughs> But you have a head also. So you use your head in the service of your heart also. If it's all about the heart, your head is also about your heart. So you have to do something with this big head you have. <laughs> so Jiva Goswami is saying that. I mean, only by intellect, it's not possible. You will be nowhere. But if you use your intellect in the context of revelation, oh, you have it very fixed place there. Your faith will be Shastriya. Shastriya Shraddha means Shraddha will be your heart exercise, but using your head to discern what revelation is saying. I mean, you have to think about revelation also. The Guru is speaking and you have to think. That, that's the, the definition of a disciple, basically. Jignasya Sriya Uttamam. All the definitions of the disciples say the same thing. And Krishna says in the Gita similarly. So Pariprasnena means you have to make questions and to make questions humbly also means you are thinking about what you are hearing. 
it's not just yes, yes, yes. I understand everything. Yes, as we were saying the other day, in yes, it's difficult for them to say no. <laughs> Any questions? And they will say yes <laughs> because it's difficult for them to say no. So they have a whole culture of. Any question? Yes. Maybe they don't have any question. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have to think about Krishna says in the Gita, no, if you use your intelligence in studying this conversation of mine, you're worshiping me through your intellect. So Buddha is there for something. Mm -hmm. Buddha is there. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, someone who, who is a Madhyam has just Shada and will know how to relate with others <laughs> in conclusion. <laughs> All the things go together. You can, of course, there are levels of being a Madhyam, levels of being a Kanisha, levels of being an Uttam, even. But, but yeah, it's not that you are an Uttam Madhikari and you have Kanisha something, if you will. All the packaging is uh, including many things at the, at the same time. So there are nuances there and there are levels again, but it's not so much to the point of, again, I have Nishta, but I have. Loki Kishrada or something like sentimental faith. No, you have Shastra. Even if you don't know Shastra from tip to toe, at least you have Shrad, you know that your Shrada should be backed with by with revelation. No? You, you know that that's the type of faith uh, you want to have and, and, and you need to have. So again, it's not that you are Madhyam and you know all the Shastra because that may not happen. But you know that your Shrada should be in relation to what revelation has to say. I trust in revelation, basically. And on the basis of that, I think, and I develop a cosmovision and a view, an angle of view, an ang a viewpoint of reality and so on. So something like that. May you yourself answer the question. Yes. I'm just <laughs> adding some ideas. That. No, but I answer the question with what I learned you know, from your classes. You know. Sorry? I answered the question with what I learned from your class. Mm. But is it is clear at the end? Yes, yes. Okay. And that's why sometimes it's so difficult for one to get along with the other, but to not talk or say that. For Kanishtas to deal with Madhya, that's so difficult. Is it? Because they are in co totally different constellations. I mean, they need one thing and the other one needs something else. And when they feel like not healthy for their process is what's healthy for the other basically so it's difficult for them to to get along <laughs> it's interesting also he's saying that i mean because the ganisha will be more narrow-minded more sentimental more uh not concerned about the things that the madhyam is concerned madhyam is concerned about being progressive and changing and making tangible progress in his practice and, and the Kanisha will be more like mediocre and trying to tend to the comfort zone and remaining there and it's okay and I'm a, I'm a devotee and everything everyone is a devotee and why you are making all these differences among people discriminating there's no need for that like more sentimental it sounds like the Uttam but it's on a very different background so it's difficult for the Madhyam with the Kanishtas to I mean, the Madhyam will, will be mostly understanding why the Kanisha is reacting like that, but the Kanisha won't that be able to understand why the Madhyam is acting like that. And the, the danger there for the Kanisha is to engage in Apura, because the Kanisha may think, oh, this Madhyam, this intermediate devotee is like discriminating and, and, and separating between levels of devotees and everyone is a devotee. Why do we, it seems like too universal? But it's, it's saying that from a non, non-committed platform so so probably he may offend or she may offend a, a madhyam so that's important for a kanista in those cases to remind them there the guidance of someone who is not a kanista because if, imagine you are a kanista <laughs> and you start to to offend a non-kanista and you go to your guy who is also a kanista will say yes no they are total you have to and he will like throw fuel to the that fire the two of you will be like engaging further thickened upper act. so that's like the end of it all you you want eventually you will no longer even be a canister you will lose all of the car for that so and as we always say being a canister in one sense it's glorious because it's bhakti adhikar there is some eligibility for bhakti but that's not all and so it's like a baby that's the example we always give the babies still like yeah, you cannot expect from a baby unless it's Sriva's Thakur's son 
<laughs> you can expect the baby to have proper mm -hmm. yet discrimination about reality and give a whole Vedantic discourse on temporariness in this world and whatever. But the baby needs to be under the guidance of someone who is not a baby. <laughs> and there's no problem. Eventually, the baby will become an adult if the adult is an adult and not a baby. No? So that's a, the same thing. If a Kanishta is under the guidance of a non Kanishta, it's okay. Eventually, the baby. Bhakta, if you will, will grow into all that it, he, she can be. But if the baby is nourished, quote unquote, but other baby, I mean, you can imagine, you put two babies together, it's not that one will like start to give advice, be careful, do not crawl across the street, there is danger there, uh, whatever. I mean, they will like, ruin each other, basically. <laughs> I mean, you can put two babies together, but one adult has to be there. I mean, you, you won't leave two babies just alone by themselves in the middle of the street. And they will somehow nourish each other. <laughs> I mean, they will last for half an hour. <laughs> one will be like on one tree there, other like rolling on the street. I don't know, you don't know. No. If the adult is there, no problem. They can do whatever they like. The adult will like give them the parameter, the, the perimeter, you know, like protected circle. So the same, canistas may be like, uh, I'm doing so many weird stuff, <laughs> baby-like, but at least one adult glance has to be like supervising them. And if they are about to kill themselves, he will, he will be like, come here. <laughs> no, this is not like, the, you know, you are thinking he's an operati, he's not an operati. <laughs> the, that madhyam, you think he's a, no, he's a madhyam. <laughs> and you think he's an operatic because he's a mother I and mean, you are not a mother that's why you think he's an operatic and still you don't understand what I'm telling you but have confidence in me and in time you will realize all the things something like this no? and, and in time that will happen I mean mostly everyone has to be a Kanishta first unless you already if you are not a Kanishta in this life then it's because you already been a good Kanishta in previous life then so now you're somewhere else no? I'm saying this also not to condemn no, can, because sometimes the votes said, oh, can ish, the body, can, can ish. If you're speaking like this, probably you are a Kanishta. <laughs> okay, what else? Any other questions? Uh, there was a statement by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. I'm not sure if I'll talk to him. But uh, Madhya yeah. Madhikari, there's a tendency to become an agnostic or an atheist in Madhya Madhikari. Is that something? There's some statement. Uh, I think he says something like that in the context of, uh -huh. I mean, he basically was like, analyzing like the dangers of being a Madhya Madhikari. I mean, there's not that dangerous as to be a Kanisha Dikari, but also there can be some danger in the sense of to be a Madhya Madhikari doesn't mean you already are on the other side, totally safe, if you will. You are not fully liberated. So there can be some danger. That, that's the main point. It doesn't mean like, and what's the main point that Madhya Madhikari is someone who again is mostly using his, her intellect and, and trying to discern and think about Shastra. Mm -hmm. So the danger for the Madhyam Adhikari, and I will say that will be more like a beginner Madhyam Kanishta, a beginner Madhyam, because there are levels of being a Madhyam. So a Madhyam who is just like in his first, her first like blooming stage. Okay, he's more discerning and understanding. I have an intellect, I have to use my intellect. But you can also use that too much, as we were explaining. No? And that, that has to do with being an agnostic. You start like to overthink revelation. And you have to think about revelation, but also there will be a point where revelation itself will like, stop. Like, stop thinking. Like it was a case of Prabhupada, his devotee, <laughs> who was thinking too much. No? Like he was like telling Prabhupada, like, oh, Prabhupada was reading, I think that was the case, no? reading the, 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 the Krishna book, the Bhagavatam. And um, Krishna is here at this moment of the day performing this lila, and then he's going here and from here to here to Madhavan and to Govardhan and to I mean and, and I was and I calculated made a calculation he said about the distances be between the places and it's not that that close to each other so that takes time so it doesn't make sense because he does all the things in this amount of time but the this and he started like to do this. so Prabhupada said you are reading too much. So, I mean, he, it's not that you cannot read, but the point is how you're reading that. So ideally, a Madhyam won't be that much, 
I mean, he probably he was not even a Madhyam, I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes that type of things can happen, like you're thinking and thinking and and by using your thinking along with revelation that gives some some taste, some experience, some insight. But it's a very subtle play because if you don't like combine your your applying of the intellect in, in, in context of revelation with humility, for example you may really start like to invest trust your intellect too much and, and you really go beyond uh, the reach of the intellect so in that sense that the danger of being ag agnostic i will say that you start to have doubts agnostic has to do with someone who i don't know if it's like this or like this i have doubts i can tell i'm not an atheist I, I won't say god doesn't exist i can tell god does exist i don't know i don't know <laughs> So, and the Madian stage is a lot about doubts in the sense of, but healthy doubts. You know, the Kanista will feel, I know everything, <laughs> but he's, he knows like 1% or something, you know, but he feels like this Utsa Amai spirit. Like you go to the first lesson of mathematics and teachers say one plus one, two. And you, okay, I understand. <laughs> one, two. So you, that's first lesson. So you end the lesson and you're like, Oh, I know. <laughs> I can teach mathematics. It's not that complicated. That's lesson one. <laughs> you go to the second lesson, you start to get discouraged more and more <laughs> because you realize, oh, it's more difficult. But the Kanishta mainly has this notion. I, I have faith. I have love for Krishna. I'm a devotee. All this like positive. And I'm not saying you are not, you don't have anything. But the Kanisha won't see the situation in a nuanced way. He won't understand yet. There's levels of faith, levels of Adhikar, levels of being a devotee, levels of surrender. It's black and white. I'm devotee. I was karmic last week, but now I'm a devotee. <laughs> <laughs> so for a Madhyam, he or she is more doubtful in a healthy way. But also, again, if you overuse your intellect, that may create another types of doubts, which are not the healthy ones which take you to doubt in the, for the sake of doubting. And Krishna says, if you just doubt after doubt after doubt, you won't be happy in this life nor the next, says in the Gita. So the doubt is just has a purpose for the Madhyam especially. And that's the role of the Guru. My Guru Maharaj will say, the role of the Guru is to make you doubt. But to make you doubt in the context of increasing your faith. Not to make you doubt to the point of, questioning the whole thing you're doing i mean i mean uh, is this real no not to that point but you you think this is like this like again a kanista mentality i know what krishna is about whatever so the guru will speak in such a way that you start to doubt not to doubt krishna but to doubt your own level of understanding of krishna because you realize oh my god i never heard that i never considered but now that i hear that i realize oh yeah that's also oh so my idea of Krishna was not fully upgraded. If you will. So that's a healthy doubt. You doubt about yourself in that sense, not about yourself in the sense that it's an existential crisis and whatever, and you get depressed. But, but you realize I'm approaching the infinite, basically. So you get closer to the infinite, how much you can like assert, assert or assess yourself. Assess. How much you can assess yourself in approaching the infinite? Like, I have it. I know it. I mean, that's, you can just, as Lesser Mass will say, touch one point in an infinite line. That's the infinite. You just touch one point today, one point tomorrow. You cannot just have it all, swallow it all. But again, if the, if the Madhyam, because of whatever reason, becomes distracted or overconfident in his, her, intellectual capacity that can create some again and proper doubts the proper doubts come by applying our intellect in the context of revelation humbly and the improper doubts will come by applying our intellect maybe in the context of revelation but without humility <laughs> and like being overconfident about so your intellect starts like to rule over shastra if you will and you don't understand that no it doesn't work like that just this way about my intellect. So I will say that's why back to Notaku, it's not that every single Madhya will become like a Gnostic or, or something like that, but that's the, the, the variety of the possibility of 
of danger, or one of them, I mean, that's not the only one, of agnosticism in, in Madhya and Bhakti. It's not like you can really, yeah, start to doubt those things that you shouldn't doubt, basically. But I will connect that with beginner stage of Madhya, beginner stage of intermediate stage. <laughs> So that's a good warning because I mean it's not that you're Madhyam and you're again already liberated, nothing can beat me or something. I mean, if you really and it's so subtle because intellect is a very refined tool and, 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 and gives insights and gives ideas, but you have to always remember this in the service of revelation. Because you can start to develop your own fancy conceptions of about Krishna consciousness also and be an intellect if you are intellectual genius especially oh my god be careful with that <laughs> if you have too much intellectual capacity that can really distract you basically when you write it's a subtle way of enjoyment basically you sense enjoyment in a really refined way you can have gross sense enjoyment with this five stuff <laughs> or you can have a more invisible, if you will, refine enjoyment with your intellect. At one point, there is no difference in principle. You're engaged in sense enjoyment. <laughs> so the intellect is to be surrender, And that's why we hear sometimes our Acharya speaking so strongly about the intellect. And it's not that they are banishing and forbidding us to think, but they are pointing also as to the dangers of overthinking the whole thing that that's that's dangerous that's an anarcha basically that's an anarcha so humility is there to protect us from that especially if you have a big head i mean you have to have a big humility to to compensate that because that head can swallow you basically. i was trying to say that you can your heart can become a stone so it's like you, you doubt, 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 and overthink the whole thing. And of course, if only through intellect, Krishna Lila doesn't make sense. And if you approach Krishna Lila only with your intellect, it's like, it doesn't make sense. With good luck, you will have some scholarly approach and you will think, okay, Krishna was like a great personality of the past. Mahaprabhu was a saint person, or he was an epileptic. Some will conclude because they are just approaching the reality through the filter of the intellect. He was trembling, he was sweating, he was fainting. Technically speaking, that corresponds with epilepsy. <laughs> if you will. Oh, as my Guru Mahesh will say, epilepsy is not contagious. <laughs> but what Mahaprabhu had was. And so you have to take another approach. Of course, you won't say that to a scholar. They are scholars, they are doing their job. But as a Madhyam, <laughs> they are perspective, perspective, you say Madhyam. Perspective. Perspective, mediums. We, we have a, our job also. If we are there, we want to be there. So, yeah. Applying the intellect. Interestingly, that's the whole idea of Nishta. Nishta means Madhyam. And the verse that corresponds with Nishta and Madhyam in the Sikh Shastra speaks of utmost humility. And that speaks about intellect in, in its proper put intellect in its place it speaks about so much humility you know? like a blade of grass only in this way you can survive your head if you will <laughs> and respecting everyone not demanding respect from yourself again if you have a big head probably you will think here i am <laughs> so the only way to to deal with that properly in the context of bhakti is like yeah to balance these two things great head Great humility and great doubts in the proper place no? to, to nourish great faith. <laughs> like this. Yes, sir. Maharaj, he used to say that we can be on the mental platform to, and controlled by the mind, and in a similar way, we can be controlled by intellect. Mm -hmm. this is also material. Yeah, yeah. So it's dangerous. Yeah, that still is a material tool, yeah. so you can really get trapped in that and it's so subtle that again it doesn't seem overtly you are in maya or something like this no you are like a gross materialistic but you are like in a very sophisticated way still in the same place if you will <laughs> or even worse basically because you can cheat yourself most, most no subtle. because it's not so overt maybe others won't notice that everyone will like praise that but the same principle you're entangled you're in the center you want to be in the center we are not in the center but we try we think we are 
but every very subtle. And you can mistake that with spirituality yeah. because again, it's material stuff, but very subtle. So it gets, it seems it gets closer to something spiritual because it's more subtle. We make mistake this thing, but but maybe it's even more gross that someone who is, has not that intellect and maybe having some problems with dealing with matter in a more gross way, maybe some devotee you know, has some problems with gross sense enjoyment, <laughs> but not with this subtle stuff and some others are not having that, that those gross problems that are totally entangled in the intellectual realm. So who knows who, who is in the in a better position if you... <laughs> Hmm. Do you have something, some question yeah, before? Sorry. Just, um, maybe everyone knows everything about this, but I don't, I don't really think know so. about the different stages. So you were talking a lot about the humility part of it and the, the view of looking at faith. So I was thinking, is that the only way to determine which of the stages you're on, or is there more? Uh, um, more definitions of how to determine mm -hmm. the different stages. Yeah, there are many, many ways we can speak about that, actually. And there are many ways of speaking about stages also, no? There are this, there, I mean, Indians love all these categories, no? <laughs> different. You find an ending categories of stages and levels of practice. And so these are three, three levels of practitioners. But again, there are, it's a very general definition of three. It's not just three. I mean, I mean in between three, there are nine, and between nine, there are 81, and, and you keep multiplying. So as we will say, between white and black, there's 2,256 shades of gray. <laughs> so it's not just one single thing. But also there are stages of bhakti, for example, that are sometimes described as signs. Vishwanath Chakravarta will speak of them as 14. <laughs> and, so on. and in between there are so many others, no? Shraddha, we spoke the other day, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha. So, we, we made some study here with the devotees last year, was? Yes. Okay, yes. of these nine stages. In time, you can also get yes. to know about them. I mean, all of us get, we need to get, continue getting to know about them. But, but yeah, generally, this is a general way of describing like three levels. Well, it's not that there's only three levels. So the main level will be, again, the more literal practitioner, the more naive, innocent, well-intentioned. I mean, again, it's not criti criticizable. No. <laughs> Something is worthy of being criticized. No word for that? Yeah, no, I think you criticizable <laughs> sounds nice so so again it's, we are not demonizing that but it's just like the baby stage if you will like let's speak in our terms you have the, the baby the teenage and the adult if you will in humans so the baby is, is still like in his own constellation basically not, not aware of so many things around him and, and so on and, and, and very easily also like Affected, no, for a baby, I don't know, or, or a child. No, you, I remember reading from Houston Smith about this in his book, The Worst Religions. I don't know the exact name. What's the name? That's very nice. Book. So you say, like, for a baby, for a boy, he has, like, I don't know, he's playing with one toy, and suddenly the toy falls and breaks. And for that boy, the baby or, or child, that's the end of the world. I mean, Apocalypse, basically. I mean, there's nothing else apart from that. It's totally centered and absorbing that particular object, and that's no longer there. Is there? Of course, someone brings the toy and a new toy again. It's like, okay, like, since this extreme, it's not like you say, well, I mean, it's just a toy. You cannot tell him it's just a toy. <laughs> And he was saying, of course, we as so-called adults sometimes engage in the same principle with a different toy, if you will. But the idea is we are to grow beyond that and to see that my life continues be beyond this broken toy. Because I mean, there is a bigger picture to that only specific aspect of reality that is no longer there. There's more to life. <laughs> So again, to, to say like this, no? so a, a, a boy is like in that stage, a canista is more like like naive and good intention, I have faith, and uh, but suddenly the toy breaks. <laughs> Everything becomes like, suddenly you have no faith and you're doing like the opposite of what you're supposed to do as a devotee in half an hour. <laughs> that happens. No. 
no, no, I want to surrender to Krishna. And the next day, you just like, like pure agnosticism or whatever. <laughs> no, that's for Madhyam, pure atheism. <laughs> <Madian. laughs> so what is, just like extreme things, no? like, yeah. still like going to, like the baby. Oh, the, so happy with my toy. Ten seconds after that, I want to kill myself. My toy is no longer with me or something. And then five seconds after the toy is back, oh, I'm so happy. So still this happens, these things happen, and we are not to condemn that person. It's part of their their experience. It's okay. It's embarrassing, but it's embarrassing if, if, if you do it then, basically. It's not embarrassing for them. It's, it's okay for a baby, as you say, they did, to urinate himself. It's not embarrassing. And we may see that and say, oh, it's embarrassing if I keep doing that. No? So, we may not urinate ourselves no longer, but we may continue getting mad about the broken toy, if you will, no? whatever attachment is our particular, whatever toy is our particular attachment is. And then comes the madhyam, the intermediate stage, which is more, you are no longer a baby, you are no longer a child, you are no, but you are not still an adult yet. So you are a teenager. The teenager has to do with what? crisis <laughs> and questioning and doubts and trying to figure out who I am and wanting to grow ideally so it's a parallel I'm giving on some level to try to illustrate the, the whole thing so Madhyam will be in that struggle and Madhyam is constant struggle basically that's not so easy but you need to go through that struggle to become an adult you know? so it's not comfortable it's really uncomfortable to be I remember myself being a teenager was so uncomfortable. I, mean, I was suffering so much <laughs> and so much existential crisis and trying to look for an identity. And, and uh, again, I don't want to make a full parallel between worldly experience and being a Madhyamadikari, but some ideas are there. A Madhyam Bhakta, again, it's not yet a, a devotee in every sense of the term. It's not an Uttam. So it's trying to look to find his, her ultimate identity and prosper, but still it's like, struggling with some things and trying to think about and to discriminate that the madhyam is mainly characterized by that but discrimination as i say before he she may have emotions but whatever the emotions are coming the madhyam will filter the emotion through the lens of shastra mm -hmm. not just being carried away by the emotional wave i feel this i feel that i feel that I mean, yeah, you can feel like you want to throw them down on the head of someone. Or something. That's a feeling. It doesn't mean you have to follow what you feel. I, mean, I feel I want to kill myself. I don't want to. Don't follow the feeling. I feel depressed. Do not follow the feeling. I mean, you feel okay. You feel that you cannot deny, but you have to do something about that. You have to filter your emotional experience through through higher knowledge. It's something that is showing you a bigger picture. Because if not, you just over identify with your emotions and, and, and you're lost because you think I'm my emotion. When you are an Uttam Bhakta, you can say that. <laughs> when you have Bhava, you can say that. I'm my emotions. You can fully identify with your emotions, but when your emotions have, do not have Bhagavan in the center, the absolute in the center, reality in the center, they are not worthy, not worthy of being trusted. So again, the Kanisha will have this kind of hodgepodge. You know, we have emotions and we'll mix his, her emotions with Krishna. I feel, oh, Krishna wants these. And actually he wants that, not Krishna. Well, oh, Krishna and this, and I feel this, and I want, and there's no Shastra giving context to that. So it's a little bit out of context. Madhyam is struggling to put everything in context by thinking about this. And an Uttam, the highest level of personality, that's again, externally seems again back as, in, as the Kanish to say, novice, but it's in another place altogether, basically. It's carried away by waves of emotion, but those emotions are right in, uh, out of spiritual insight. So it's a whole different thing. It's difficult to understand it in Uttam Bhakti. It's like, it's not of this world already, man. It's, Crazy person, basically, <laughs> in love of God. So to understand a crazy person in love of God, you have to become that person also, basically. And when you become that person, everything makes sense from that perspective. When you get mad in love of God, you understand someone else in love of God. Unless you don't get there, you can speak about that. But. <laughs>
you have to go there. You know, that, that's what Srila Prabhupada is saying. Go there and find that for yourself, basically. You know? So Madhyam is someone who wants that, who wants to go there and is really trying to do that. You know? <clears throat> So yeah, there are many other things we can say about that. And, but I think a, a detailed study of the stages also help to really look more in detail. Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Nartha Nibriti. Till that, we could say that's Kanishta Dikai. The Nishta has mostly to do with Madhyam, with being a Madhyam. And Ruchi may be advanced stages of Madhyam and Asakti start to become an Ujjam and Bhava and Prem. So well, that takes time by studying all the stages and each one of there are symptoms you kind of start to really relate to, okay, this is where I am, because that's important to know where you are in the whole map, in the journey, where you want to be, and where you should no longer remain also, <laughs> because that can happen. There are two varieties that, that we call Sahaja. There are two varieties of being Sahaja. Sahaja means, how do you say in English? An easy going. <laughs> Facilist, you have that word now in English. Right. That you want things easier. <clears throat> no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want something easier. No, you want to oh, the, the thing. Imitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the idea. No? We call it sahaja. Imitate. Sahaja means easy. So sahaja means someone who wants the thing easy. <clears throat> and easy is not not good. <laughs> that's that's a that's our our problem we want things easier so that's not good and, and when someone is something is difficult we get discouraged oh this is difficult but the point is <laughs> as we always say you have the two extremes and the middle path so the two extremes are easy and impossible thank you and in middle path is difficult. Thank you. So you have it. I mean, difficult is not extreme. It's the middle path. Extremes are easy and impossible. I mean, if everything is easy, it's boring. If everything is possible, you get discouraged. But something is difficult. Oh, you got the challenge there. You have to change. Again, <laughs> you have to improve. So Sahaja is someone who works the easy way, the easy path. And there are two varieties of that. One is as Sula Semaras will say, full rush where angels fear to threat, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to attain a high thing when you are not ready for that yet. So you want to really run and rush into a higher realm without acquiring the necessary, um, yeah, eligibility, adhika. But there is another variety of Sahaja, I will say, that is in the other direction, that you are in certain stage, but now you are you should be ready to go to the next chapter, but you are not willing to do so. And you want to remain there. That's a hajj also. You want the easy thing. I mean, it's not easy. It becomes more and more difficult to insist on comfort zone again. You follow. You are a canista, let's say, but you, the time has come for you to be to 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 obtain a not PhD yet, but some grade, <laughs> enter into madhyam. But you insist on being a canista, so, like saying no? that, that's a hajj also. That's as problematic as the other variety of hajj. You want to run too quickly to a higher realm, or you want to insist and remain on the lower realm? It's, it's not, not helpful. Anyway, um, I can follow up to yes. Yeah. Just thinking about this, you know, Madhyama becoming or this danger of becoming an agnostic. But, I mean, is it like he says, you know, it doesn't seem to me, I and mean, it's hard to, to understand for me that he sits in an armchair, you know, and he has a thought and follows this thought, you know, over his, you know, like over the Shastra. Mm -hmm. But I, I've, I've seen, well, I saw, you know, in my hometown, for example, in one, you know, Gaudiya institution. There were a lot of in insightful and intelligent people over the years and who inspired me a lot. But so somehow or other, they just disappeared because they were, you know, because the level in that institution was just to pull them down. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, they, they, were, they were thwarted, we say. It was stopped 
they had like this, I think they had glimpses of this, you know, they understood more than the rest yeah. of them, right, from the Shastra, because the, the, the ideas that came later, you know, were permitted, but they came later, and they, these, guys, these guys, like, they, they, they kind of, they had some in, in, insight, and they expressed this insight, you know, long before. But then it looked like they, um, you know, they, 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 they uh, started doing different things in life because they were expelled from the institution mm -hmm. or something happened. Mm -hmm. So doesn't, maybe, it, isn't it like they, they became agnostic because of some situation in life and they tried to explain it away because they had no devotee association at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And they just, they got along with life. So it was, you know, I mean, in, in practical sense, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because they saw such people, and it was, yeah, it was a waste. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there are, yeah, so many possibilities. I just gave like one general idea why Bhakti mm -hmm. may have said that, but what you say, of course, it's it's also possible, and of course, it's sad it shouldn't happen, but. <laughs> uh, of course, each case is so different that you don't know the yeah. specific background of each situation and what happened there. If there was there, there was some, yeah, I mean there was some apparatus. I, I don't know, maybe not, maybe yes. It's, each case is unique, <laughs> so we cannot just say yeah. It's because of this that everyone that is that person ends up like this. So it's yeah. very specific. But I've seen that specific case you mentioned, and of course that's not the idea, and I, of course that speaks that. Maybe I, I'm not saying those devotees were Madhyams. Yeah, they yeah, end up becoming like agnostics. Possible, right? People. Yeah. Maybe they were Kanistas, but advanced Kanistas. Yeah, yeah. Kanista would them, <laughs> yeah. let's say. And again, I'm speaking in general. I don't know them even. I don't know who you are speaking for, but but still they are not yet yeah, fully seasoned Madhyams in the sense of let's say they have some thought process, some insights, but also at the same time they have this like how to say more sentimental or, or superficial idea of chastity to the institution or whatever and, and, and they if they are expelled of, of, of out of the institution or whatever they cannot like conceive of continue with the practice any longer yeah. or yeah. this type of ideas like whatever i don't want to go to any specific detail but i know institutions that basically ingrain in you this dna uh, basically, this is the only one bona fide place to be concerning Gaudiya Vedanta. Yeah. And if you cannot make it here, you are not a devotee, basically. Yeah. I mean, every, I mean, anywhere you can find that. I mean, if you are a fanatic, you will think in those terms. <laughs> but I've, I've seen this type of thought that only the Bhakti Not Parivar is the only current a live current of Gaudiya Vaishnavism in the world. And only, so all the, everyone else, all the other Parivars, they are Sahajas, they are Smarta Brahmin, they are uh, Case Goswamis, blah, blah, blah. Saha and all the other ones, apart from our mission, the Bhattu not Parivar, they are offensors to, offensive to this and this and this. So, conclusion? <laughs> We are the blessed ones. Yes. <laughs> and only here the real thing is going on. So of course that's like canista.com basically. <laughs> no, official, not technically speaking, not really. And it's an, an, a way of saying I'm the best, basically. I'm in the yeah. best in the best institution, the only one. <laughs> my guru is the best, my vision is the best. My, in the background of all that is I'm the best. Still, yeah. no? So Again, I'm not saying these devotees were thinking like that, but if you are in such an environment when there is this social pressure that only in this perimeter Krishna consciousness can happen, and you start to think too much, not too much because you are doing it wrong, but too much because the, unfortunately that environment is not promoting a Madhyam mentality. That's the point. You no longer want to remain a Kanishta, but the whole structure is there for you to be a Kanishta. And it's, it's not... And I don't have a problem with even missions or institutions being canistas. Uh, there has to be some place for them. <laughs> but the point is for those, I mean, who are ready for developing new wings, if you will, <laughs> the institution may be able to 
connect them with some other currents that they may continue nourishing their thinking and insights. But if they just give this idea, no, no, no. If you go out here, you are not loyal. You're like a betrayer, 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 traitor. What? Betrayer. Betrayer mm -hmm. of our guru, and you're unchaste, and you are going against his wish. And, and if that's ingrained from day one, those maybe thinking people on some level, thinking people and sincere, will collapse because I cannot. Told, I cannot sustain myself with this level of thinking, but I cannot see myself outside of this box. <laughs> so the result of that, they end up doing something else because they have to continue living some of their lives. <laughs> Again, I'm giving a general idea, but I will say if you are a little bit more progressive, you will understand, no, no, th this message of only here, the real things going on, this is wrong. So if I cannot fit here any longer, I have to continue growing my spiritual life somewhere else. So that's another level of seeing the bigger picture. But again, every every particular case is is, is really individual. But yeah, it's unfortunate that those things, but that those things happens in every in every religion. Even I mean, this is depicting a level of of adik. It's adikar, basically adikar. So you are in certain adikar. It's not a problem. The problem is when there is again no one else. Supervising the whole thing from above with another adhika. <laughs> you have a higher glance there, it's no problem. You can be 99.9% .9 Kanishta, but you have 0.1% of someone higher vision, and that person is leaving the cattle, if you will. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But... Okay, something else? One more question? A quick question. Okay, I don't know if the, the answer will be that quick. <laughs> Generally, the quickest questions are the re require longest answers. So I was just reading Bhaktivinoda's uh, uh, the seventh work for His biography, yeah, Rupa Bilas, yeah. And uh, he didn't wear a tea like all until he moved. Until he, until he, he said he wouldn't wear it until he got a picture. Mm -hmm. until, <laughs> <laughs> the question is, should I take off my Kanti yeah. Mala, basically? <laughs> now you can keep it. Okay. No, I mean, there, there are, I mean, there are ways of doing that from the proper way. I mean, I'm not saying, with this, I'm not contradicting how Bhakti Taku was wrong. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm not saying either. Therefore, everyone should do like that. There is a place for that, like he felt. And there is a particular way of doing things in different places and cultures and so on so so his feeling was yeah I, I'm, I'm i mean as you know but you know takwars my guru Mash will be picking he's the first western convert he will consider him he was not born as Gaudiya Vaishnav. he was born in a shakta family in india and eventually he got he was raised as a christian so very interesting mix and he became a Gaudiya Vaishnav eventually he's adult I mean, he was, yeah, he was already married with not all his children, but many of them already. So he was adult, and he's adult then. So, so I think, uh, really, uh, knowing he, his life and his biography, he was more of this idea of like receiving them from his guru, receiving Kanti Mala from his guru. Uh, well, that's part of the initiation process also, no? The Pancha. Panchayaknya that also my Guru Maharaj follows, Tapa, Pundra, and so on. So you receive all these items <coughs> that, that make for the Sadaka Deha. The Guru is giving Tilak and giving this, giving Nam, giving and so on. So there's place for that. I mean, again, if it's with the proper conception, okay, I prefer to receive them from my Guru. I, I, but he was practicing. It's not that he was doing nonsense till the day that the Kanti Mala came and they said, oh, no, now I'm a devotee. No, I remember cases like that. <laughs> I remember once I was in Chile, like 20 years back, and, and there were some initiations going on that day. So the fire yakni was there, and everyone was just about to enter the ceremony, and there was one devotee missing, not coming. So we were wondering, where is he? I mean, he knew he was going to be initiated today. So at the end, like, after some half an hour later, he, he comes. <laughs> But with a very like particular clothing, not like discotheque clothing or something like this. 
<laughs> and he was like a little bit like, how do you say in English? Topsy turvy? <laughs> tipsy. tipsy, tipsy. That's another thing. Yeah, tipsy. So I said, where were you? Where, where were you? I say, I mean, it was my, he's in her it was my, my last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the opposite to what Bhakti Not Thakur was doing. <laughs> you know? He was surely practicing. I mean, he was going doing all these dances, this devotee with Kanti Mala and all that stuff, and that's not the idea. <laughs> and Bhakti Not Thakur was not wearing those things because he considered, no, oh, I will officially represent Gaudi Vaishnavism with by having the, he took that seriously in that particular direction again it's a way of doing that there it's not just one way of doing that so if you are inspired to but my point is okay if you are not initiated like greg or some others uh, i mean you can wear kantimala you can wear tilak if, but with a proper awareness and conception and, and even for those who are initiated also that's important to, to know i mean it's not okay now i'm initiated i have the right to have feel like I'm hunting <laughs> as much as you represent that for sure, <laughs> but please do not make it an embarrassment for the whole tradition in the name of being a devotee. And you're sometimes that can happen also. I mean, devotees have really misbehaved in the name, I mean, without bad intention, but in the name of I don't know, preaching or helping others, they've been a little bit intense, if you will, with good intention again, but without too much criteria. And people like identify. I like, oh no, there it comes, they saw this, oh, 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 they want my money. Let's run from here. <laughs> like so we don't want that also. But in conclusion, you can keep your continuum. Yeah, okay, one more last question. Then I had one, and yes. we finish today with that. I want to ask about the Madhima Dikari. Uh, they're in this position uh, in existential crisis and in Nishta at the same time. Somehow? Yeah, when, when I say existential crisis again, I was speaking more with the compared to the analogy with being a teenager. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the Madhya has existential crisis in the sense of a, teen, a mundane teenager is having, basically. No, I mean, the Madhya Madhya is, is, has firm faith in the tradition, but at the same time, it's not, it's, it's not in the goal of life. I mean, that's my point. A, Kanish, a, a Madhya Bhakta is someone who has a glimpse of his potential, her potential of all that he, she can be, but at the same time knows I'm not there yet. And I know that it takes certain steps to, to, to reach there. So in that sense, I'm saying existential crisis. It's not that I don't know who I am. I don't know who I want to be. Not in that sense, but in the sense of I know who I should be, <laughs> and, and and I know I'm not yet there, <laughs> because he she has a real conception of the ultimate perspective. No, even a, a Madhyam Bhakta will have some 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 idea on some level or another of his ultimate identity of service. In a sakti, this is arising naturally inside of one. Who I am in eternity. That's an important point because, again, as we were saying yesterday, no? love of God, in one level, that's generic. So eventually we have to know the specifics of that. Again, not we have to know like, okay, I have to receive that information, but you have to be driven by certain affinity in wonder. And the same happens with your own identity because what's your identity? As a Madhyam, of course, you are, you are properly situated as a sadhaka and, and there is a whole identity developing, but also there is some affinity in, developing in connection with, let's say, Krishna Lila. For but we still do not know as Madhyam in all full detail who we are in Krishna Lila, let's say. Who we are is in every sense of the term. It's not just, I have affinity for Sakya Bhava. I have affinity. That's not who you are yet. I mean, that's something. That's a lot. If that's if that's real, of course, because you can also say, I heard the words saying, uh, I, I don't like Madhuri Abab. So so I, I I must have affinity for Sakya Bhava. No, it's not like that. <laughs> so the, these are the two options. I don't have too much affinity here, so I will go for this one. No, it doesn't work. Like that. <laughs> 
it's not that I like this because I don't like that. You follow? It's, it's like implying, Uda, I, I love you a lot just because I hate Samananda. And you say, what type of love? It's weird. So, so my point is like in Matiam, again, it's a progressive practitioner. It's someone who is really in a healthy way obsessed with making progress, who really feels the urge. Urge? In a healthy way, again, not, not paranoid, but the urge of making progress because he, he she understands that it's all about growing and there's no end to, the, to that progress. He, she had the glimpse of that, which can be overwhelming at times. Try to imagine having a glimpse of what Srila Siddha Maharaj will say. You are trying to approach the infinite. Approaching the infinite means there is no limit to how much progress you can make. There's no limit. So are you ready to enter into a place where there's no limit for progress? <laughs> you, both. you try to make progress and you're making progress, but you will always feel there's so much progress to be made. So, so that's the... The, the, the inner life of the, of the Madhyam, <clears throat> if you will, on some level, there are levels of Madhyams again. So in that sense, I'm saying existential crisis in the sense that I'm no longer, I, I'm still not the person I, I would like to be. I, I have a prospect of that. I had a glimpse of that. I'm no longer there. I want to be there. What I have to do. And still the Madhyam is dealing with some issues. Yeah, it's not just fully transcendental entity. So, so this struggle, you know, like it's a healthy, healthy struggle dealing with some relativities in, in one's inner world, but at the same time, this shining light, like a prospect is there, is there a prospect is there, so as one devotee once compares, it's like a, a boat rocking in these two directions, in the direction of real humility, as a Madian, which takes you to really be aware of how fallen you are, how undeserved is this grace, and you feel on that side, this on the other side, such great hope because of the nature of the mercy and the disposi graceful graceful disposition of Sri Guru Vaishnav our deity. So much great hope, but so much folly I am. But so much great hope. <laughs> but so much hope. <laughs> so the boat is rocking in this two rocking, you say? Yeah. In these two directions. At the end, the hope will win. No, it's not that you will end up in a mental hospital with, with, with paranoia or something. I'm so full. <laughs> so the hope will like qualify the discouragement, if you will. It's a discouragement nourished by hope, if you will. <laughs> That's a healthy combination. That's what Rupa and Sanatan say when they met Mahaprabhu. And they say, Appana Jogya Deki Manu Pauk Shoba Tata Pitu Maraguna Upa Jaya <laughs> <laughs> so they say apana jogya deki although we perceive in ourselves how fallen we are now they were meeting mahaprabhu try to imagine how will you feel when you meet mahaprabhu i mean you won't try to present yourself i'm so great mahaprabhu look at my qualities this is my curriculum vitae and this is all this. i did all this so many devotees i opened this <laughs> you feel like <laughs> but at the same time so much hope no so they on one side we feel so falling extremely falling in front of you but by 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 perceiving your qualities we become so greedy to to taste those qualities they say in this word taste your qualities. qualities means in this case your mercy we have a glimpse of your mercy and we kind of avoid developing greed for that although we feel so fallen that is, I'm so fallen that I know I do not deserve that. But that's so charming, so attractive. I cannot but how great for that, be attracted to that. I cannot but have hope, that's the point. But someone said, but you are so fallen. Yeah, they will say, yes, it's, I'm not denying <laughs> Actually, by, by realizing that the more and more, the more I increase my greed for those things because the more I feel in need of that. So that's how it works. So that's what I meant by existential crisis in the life of the Madhya. And of course, Rupa and Sanatana are beyond that, but they are like depicting the, the spirit of the Madhya. He or she is like living together with these two things. Basically, you know? like, I'm this, but this is coming, and I need that. 
and I'm this, but this, and I, I am attracted to that. I see myself there even. That, that's the, the most interesting thing that you start to advance so much that you start to realize, have very interesting realizations and insights and emotions and attachment and attractions. But at the same time, you feel yourself more and more unqualified. So it seems like contradictory, but that's a paradoxical experience in that stage. You know, like you feel totally underserved, you feel really falling, and at the same time, so many things are coming. <laughs> but you, because you feel so falling in the healthy way, you realize these things are coming are not mine. It's not my product, it's not my merit, it's not my, my anything. It's, divine grace in this way one keeps progress okay some ideas if you have further questions we save them for tomorrow with your permission so thank you very much for your time your patience your questions Ananta Koti Vaishnava Brindaki Jai Gauda Hari Bo